Libraries have always played a, a great role in my life. I have many, many hours in libraries, albeit not always awake, but <laughs> we all spend a lot of time in them. And one thing you can say about a library is that every time you walk out the door, you're richer, even if you've been asleep. There's a great deal to offer in this building. Uh, I understand you already have some 51,000 books which is, uh, I think, really tremendous for a beginning library. And I think you'll have a great opportunity to uh, gain knowledge as the time goes on, especially the youngsters. Uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunity in there, and I'm, I'm sure it'll benefit you in your uh, future lives and even the people who like to just come in and sit down and read a book. Some 45 commercial exhibitors, and uh, they, of course, are constantly in research in developing new materials for the use of the orthodontist, and of course, uh, we will have exhibits on uh, commercial equipment that's used in the orthodontic offices. How important is continual education for the orthodontist in practice? Well, it is a must, because the field of dental education, and I'm speaking of all branches of dentistry, is developing so rapidly that an individual that uh, does not constantly upgrade his uh, uh, training, uh, in the matter of a few years, he is completely lost. This week, Miss Teenage Fort Worth 1971 will be crowned, and one of the 12 finalists in the Miss Teenage Pageant Tuesday night will be one of the happiest moments of her life. To Miss Teenage Fort Worth of 1970, Freddie Melinda Ramos, it will mean giving up her year's reign by placing the coveted crown on the head of another lucky girl. Melinda, how do you feel about uh, giving up your crown? Do you do it reluctantly, or are you looking forward to Tuesday night? A bit reluctantly, but at the same time, I'm glad to crown my successor. But I've had an exciting year, and um, I'm looking forward to um, a little more public relations work. I see you have uh, quite a few other trophies besides oh. <laughs> the Miss Teenage Fort Worth. Uh, yes. What are some of the events that you have won? Well, um, I got a trophy for being um, Mardi Gras queen of my high school, Nolan High School, in 1970. I won state queen and national queen for the American GI Forum just recently, too. We look forward to seeing you Tuesday night at the Miss Fort Worth, uh, Miss Teenage Fort Worth pageant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you'll be crowning a girl. Uh, we hope that you'll be just as uh, lovely and pretty as you. Thank you. Bye-bye.
I think the truth was uh, described by our president in a single phrase, that Israel is entitled to borders that are defensible. They were willing to stand on the borders that were fixed since 1948, even though they were fixed as a temporary matter and a temporary armistice. They didn't start this fracas in 1967. The fact that the fracas or the war, the Six-Day War, happened at all and was so dramatically ended proves that the temporary boundary lines were not defensible. And what they want now is not territory for the sake of more sand or more land. What they want are borders that are defensible and recognition as a sovereign nation and respect for that sovereignty just as they are willing to accord respect for the sovereignty of others. Well, they have their own style, just as they have styles when I was in college. Uh, we, we're not worried and kind of hung up about the long hair anymore. In fact, I saw one of my good trustees the other day with pretty long hair, so I've decided that long hair is very fine. And our students are very well behaved. We do not have polarization on the campus, although there are different lifestyles and a lot of uh, different opinions. We have an openness on the campus that has caused us to be free and open with each other rather than tight. I think this spirit is the kind of spirit that Dallas and all of our area wants to prevail at SMU. So I don't think this is going to be any harm. What will this money go for? Well, the sustentation money uh, is different than money for buildings. It's absolutely spent on our budget. It doesn't go for buildings or books or endowment or um, equipment. All of it goes for operating money to supplement the money we have from tuition. As a matter of fact, uh, I've already spent the money. We anticipated it in the budget, and we built it into the quality of our program.
Well, <clears throat> I believe uh, these people have uh, uh, made us uh, open our eyes to things that uh, we hadn't thought about or hadn't realized. Strictly by negotiation, as uh, Mr. Lindsay had said, we had several meetings. Uh, at first, we started off we're, that we felt we were being pressured, but we weren't. Uh, I think these people have a, a worthy cause that all of us should look uh, more deeply into. Uh, we have stated here uh, goals that we have set down by mutual agreement, and our company will do the very best that we can to reach these goals and, and on occasion have a periodic review of what uh, we have promised and what we have done. Uh, most of those were possession cases. Uh, Jim, they had some people had some marijuana, such as you see here. Uh, other people had uh, dangerous drugs and uh, some LSD. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them panicked when they saw us coming in the park and just threw it down. In fact, I think one of the defendants just handed one of the officers the, the LSD as we walked in the park. Using your demonstration board, what other uh, drugs did you pick up last night? Well, primarily the three drugs we picked up were uh, marijuana and uh, the methamphetamine or your stimulant class here and the LSD or hallucinogenic class. These were the three main types that we got. Up there. If you could put it into some kind of volume, how much drug material did you confiscate last night? Oh, uh, I'd have, it'd just have to be a rough estimate. I'd say roughly uh, 700 grains of marijuana, about 300 tablets of LSD, and uh, about 100 different assorted uh, dangerous drugs, tablets, and some paraphernalia, some needles and syringes. Of course, uh, this does not in, uh, include the drugs that we had uh, previously bought. These were just the drugs that were found last night while conducting the raid. We feel that uh, people are going to always uh, have to have meat, and somebody's going to supply it to them. And uh, with the growing population, uh, we feel that uh, we're justified in, uh, in the expenditure. What is this going to do to your employment figures? Uh, that remains to be. Uh, if we double our capacity, which we hope to do, uh, it should probably increase the number of employees. Mrs. Mitchell, I believe your name is. Yes, sir. Uh, Y'all are protesting today on the uh, Stag Affair? Yes, sir. Uh, this is a political rally, and many of the candidates in Texas are here to speak, and they've excluded the ladies, and we don't like it. We have gone into the general fund extensively because of uh, the fact that the salaries of the staff must go on. Of course, the salaries of our staff have been cut in half, but uh, when you have 270,000 or 300,000 uh, people on strike and you don't have the money coming in, naturally you have already gone into the general fund. And it could include a lot of things. It could include uh, loans 
on union properties and so forth and so on. But these are decisions that will be made at this uh, meeting. This is the 18th year SMU has been the host for the Southwest Journalism Forum. High school students from across the state who are interested in the profession continue to come to the hilltop. This year, the morning seminars included sessions on electronic and print journalism, advertising, journalism education, and photography. Then at a noon luncheon, participants saw annual journalism awards go to outstanding professionals in Dallas and Fort Worth, including Channel 8's own Don Harris and Susie Humphreys. Don and Susie, of course, are co-hosts for News 8 Etc. seen on Channel 8 every weekday morning. A special award went to luncheon speaker Sam Donaldson, ABC's White House correspondent. Donaldson told the more than 300 participants, potential journalists, of the dangers of speculating in the news business, and he talked about some of the hazards involved in predicting events in the future. The Southwest Journalism Forum shows every sign in the future. Well, maybe I better not predict either. This is Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move at SMU. I'm also ready to move into the area of judiciary reform. And there's no way at present to assure a working judiciary and to determine whether a federal judge is competent to continue on the bench. We must not be afraid to make progressive changes for the future. Congressional, electoral, ethical reform. This is what we need so that our system will have the continued and the increasing support of the people. No, I think you'd have to look at it the other way, that uh, there are a great number of close races in uh, the United States, in key states, probably 70 to 20 states. Uh, we think we have a chance to make gains in the Senate, and the uh, thing the President wants to emphasize is that We've had difficulty moving the Congress, which we've had. Uh, we need the men elected who will support the president, and uh, this is why I'm here to uh, support Congressman Bush, for example, who we think would be outstanding in support of the president. This would be the message which the president will have himself. Now, in regard to the trip of Vice President Agnew to the Texas area, and immediately being followed up by the president's trip to Texas, is this an indication that Texas is in trouble as far as Republican ranks are concerned? No, I think you're putting the reverse on each of these. As a matter of fact, uh, we think we have an excellent chance here, and we think we have good candidates. As I said, uh, we feel that George Bush would be a great addition to the Senate. He would support the president. He'd be there on the day when you organize the Senate, which is uh, uh, what we would hope would be a Republican Senate, although it's an uphill fight. We've got an outstanding candidate for governor in Paul Eggers, and so that the, the president's feeling is we have a chance in Texas. Uh, he feels that uh, if, if he can be the margin to help win by the showing Texans who have supported him very, very thoroughly in terms of his policies, that these are the men he'd like, we would hope that they'd join us in sending these men to new offices.
rates for the average homeowner and 